Hello, I'm Dan from Green Acres Sportsman's Club and inventor of the Gundog Success Program. Here we are today with Snappy, a seven month old Chesapeake Bay Retriever to show you how we begin to teach hand signals to our dog while using the RAP 1400 e-collar from DT Systems Dog Training Equipment. The beauty of the RAP 1400 e-collar is the fact that I can strap this to the back side of my hand and have hands-free operation. You'll see during this video that I'm going to be doing all kinds of different procedures which involve having my hands full with equipment and the dog itself. So having that hands-free operation really, really helps when doing hand signal drills. Also, the wrap has a 1400 yard range. It has continuous vibrate, jump, and nick features. It has a rapid access button that can actually be programmed to continuous vibrate or nick. It also can control up to three dogs and has 16 levels of gentle touch stimulation. Today we've got a seven month old Chesapeake Bay Retriever who's actually e-collar conditioned and at least partially force fetched. So this dog's actually been through a lot of the precursor steps of getting the dog ready to do true hand signals, one of which is called food bowl casting. For a link to a great video on food bowl casting, stay tuned until the end of this video. During this video, I'll have the RAP 1400 e-collar transmitter on my hand. I'm only going to use the e-collar if the dog has a critical failure in one of her basic obedience tasks. In other words, I'm not going to use this to reinforce for a bad hand signal. Teaching hand signals involves a lot of repetition and reinforcement, and we simply use our check cord to stop the dog if they go the wrong direction and repeat the process until we get a success. Using e-collar for a bad cast will involve breaking your dog's confidence. So have your e-collar on and for the most part just use reinforcement with the lead. Let's start out with fun casts. So in the Gun Dog Success Program we teach four general casts. Right over, left over, right back, and left back. The difference between right and left back is that the dog will turn one way versus the other based on which hand I hold up. The dog will spin the same direction relative to the hand that I hold up for that relative back. Let's start out with fun cast. In a fun cast, the dog's going to be positioned in front of you. You're going to have one bumper in your hand. You're going to decide which direction you want to go with that bumper. Place it in the appropriate hand. Place the check cord in the other hand. Sit. Say the word sit or use your sit whistle, get the dog's attention, and give the hand signal while throwing the bumper. It looks like this. So I'm going to work on a right over. Snap. Release the dog simultaneously. We want the dog to start learning to move instantly. Sit. Good girl. Sit. We want the dog to start learning to move instantaneously when we move our hand. So we're actually going to release the dog verbally as we throw the bumper. Now I'll work on a right back. Notice I'll step over just a slightly from center and I'll toss the bumper offset from center such that the dog will turn naturally to my right. Back. Good girl. All right. Sit. Good girl. Okay. Good. Sit. Good heel. Sit. Now let's do a leftover. Right. Good girl. All right. Good. Sit. Good girl. Okay. Sit. Now we'll do a left back. Again, notice I'm stepping offset slightly from a center line, and I'm going to throw the bumper offset from the center line. Watch my hand signal. Hand goes straight up, then I toss the bumper. Back. All right. So this is going to do something called conditioning. It's going to cause the dog to build an association with driving to the bumper in accordance with seeing a certain hand signal. Once the dog starts to become proficient at consistently going the direction that we want them to go, i.e. probably two weeks of this type of training, then we'll start to do what we call single steady cast. With a single steady cast, we're going to ask the dog to be steady. For more information about teaching your dog general steadiness, which is required for this, 
Again, wait for the end of the video where you'll see a link that'll send you right to a perfect video that'll show you how to start teaching steadiness. So we're gonna ask the dog to sit first, sit. It's important at this point, if the dog breaks, that we stop the dog with the leash, bring him back, and redo it. Sit. It's also important that the dog must be looking at us, heel, good, before we send him. Don't send your dog unless it's looking up at you. Sit. Good. That's why you do fun cast for a long period of time because remember with fun cast you've got the bumper and it forces the dog to look at you. You got to do those fun casts for a long period of time before you do the steadies. Sit. All right, snappy, good girl. Good girl. Sit. All right. Now we'll work on steady backs, heel, sit. Remember, if the dog goes the wrong way, all we're gonna do is slowly stop the dog with the lead and redo it. If the dog goes the wrong way, all we're gonna do is slow the dog down and stop it with the lead, no harsh pulls, pick up the bumper and start over. Back. Good dog, all right, snappy. Good girl. Sit. Good. Sit. Heel. Sit. As you can see, I've got my hands full. No problem with the wrap 1400. Sit. We'll work on a right BACK. Notice my hand up like this, waiting for the dog to look at me. If she doesn't, sit. I can give her a light reinforcement. Back. Good. All right. All right. Again, probably another two weeks. Sit. Should do single steady cast for about two weeks. You'll be able to see that the dog will be acutely watching which way you move your hand before it takes the cast. In other words, you'll see a very strong understanding and correspondence between which way you move your hand and which way the dog is anticipating going. Get to this point before you move to the next step. Now we've got two bumpers. We're gonna work on double steady cast. Starting out with the most simplified. I'm gonna grab my check cord just in case the dog breaks, I can stop her. Put one bumper on either side. Again, you're four weeks into it already. Now we're going to cast the dog to the first one thrown, not the last one down. The dog's naturally gonna to wanna to go to the last one down. So we're going to teach them that they've got to actually go only where we send them. So we're going to use the fact that the dog wants to go to one to teach it that it's got to take our hand signal, go exactly where we want it to go. If you've done your steady cast, guys, this will come easily. If, if you haven't done your single steady cast, you're going to find out very quickly that you're not ready for the step. Sit. Now I'll go to the other one. Good girl. All right. Hey, hey, Snappy. Keep your dog excited. If your dog starts losing its enthusiasm at any point during these exercises, throw a fun retrieve. Snappy. Remember, we want to promote excitement and confidence. So using that fun retrieve is a great way to achieve that. Sit. Specifically, you can use the fun retrieve to bring your dog out of the doldrums if they're getting bored. You can also use that fun retrieve as a positive reinforcement for a job well done. Now we'll do a back over combination. Right back, left over, sit. Good dog, heel. If the dog had gone the wrong way, all I'd have to do is stop the dog with the check cord, sit. So when you're first doing these exercises, make sure that that check cord is always in your hand. Good. Sit. Good. Okay. Hey! Continue doing different combination of double overcasts. But wait to do this final combination because it is the most difficult. For this combination, we're gonna throw an over, sit, followed by a back in the same direction. So there's a right over and a right back. Sit. Sit. Good. 
Back. Good dog. All right. Good girl. Now, when you're working on your double cast, sit. If the dog has any trouble, in other words, if, if they don't seem to be figuring out, they're going the wrong way, leave the bumper out that they're failing and going to in the wrong direction and throw a fun cast in the direction that you've been having trouble getting the dog to go. So for instance, if my dog kept going to the over bumper when I wanted to go back, I'd leave the over bumper out and throw a fun cast back. Sit. Back. It's a guarantee, or as close to it as you're going to get in dog training, that the dog's going to go for that fun bumper before they go for the, the other one. Sit. Now we'll transition into having three bumpers. The hardest cast to get from your dog is going to be getting it to go back when there's two over bumpers out there. So we'll use the power of a fun cast to teach the dog. So we'll place both of our overs out first, and now we'll throw a fun cast backwards. Back. All right. Hey, hey. Good. Now we'll try the opposite direction. Sit. Good. Back. All right. Heel, Snappy. All right. Sit. Oh, what a good girl. Good. Whoops. Fetch. Good. Sit. Now we'll try all three bumpers out. We've just done a fun cast in the backwards direction. Sit. Now we'll do a steady cast in the backwards direction. Sit. Back. Good girl. Heel. All right. Good. And remember, folks, when you're, when you're getting your dog to this point, always have the lead in your hand. There's been a few times in this video when I didn't have my lead in my hand. Sit, because I know this particular dog, she's a little further in the process. When you first introduce something new, make sure you have the check cord in your hand. Just stop the dog and repeat it. Stop, simplify, and succeed if you have any trouble. Sit. There's a left hand, steady back in the presence of over. Back. Okay, Snappy! All right. Good dog. <laughs> Once your dog is finished with e-collar conditioning and force fetch, as well as understanding how to do casting with all three bumpers out at the same time and has at least 75% success, you can begin performing this task off lead. Remember, you use the e-collar only for obedience infractions. In other words, only when the dog does something wrong from an obedience standpoint, not for a poor cast. If the dog goes the wrong way, you say no, bring the dog back into the middle, take the bumper away, and start over. Simplify if necessary. The magic number, guys, is 75% success. If your dog is 75% successful or more, you're always going to be training in a positive direction. That number drops below 75% success, the dog's confidence will dwindle, and you'll start losing that forward progression.